calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, or Wednesday rather, May 19th, 2021. As a preliminary matter, this is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Meyer is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, which encourages and allows open meetings of state agencies and local governments to be conducted remotely in order to mitigate transmission of COVID-19 virus. The governor's order, which you can find posted with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Further, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. I will now turn to the first item on the agenda, which is item number two for approval, LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission requests, a pride proclamation and crosswalk painting. Andy Rubinson and Lisa Krinsky from the Rainbow Commission. Are, are the Rainbow Commission representatives here, Mr. Chapdelaine? I see Lisa Krinsky, so I can promote her. Okay, I'll start once she's on reading the proclamation and then I will recognize um, Ms. Krinsky. Great, okay, great, good thank evening. you. Uh, good evening. Uh, so we have two items, a, a Pride Proclamation and Crosswalk Painting requests. I'll start with reading the Pride Proclamation. Um, whereas the month of June is recognized nationally as LGBTQIA plus Pride Month, to commemorate the uprising by transgender and other LGBTQIA plus people against ongoing harassment and abuse by New York City police at the Stonewall Inn in 1969, which marked the beginning of the modern LGBTQIA plus rights movement. And whereas that uprising was, was, was one of many acts of resistance to the enforcement of unjust laws and the local state and federally sanctioned harassment and abuse of LGBTQIA plus people transgender and gender diverse people, black people, Hispanic, Latino people, Asian people, indigenous people, women and anti-war and pro-democracy activists. And whereas political demonstrations, legislative advocacy and social, social change efforts to create a more just and fair world by all of these marginalized groups define the second half of the 1960s. And whereas that work continues today by people of all races, ethnicities, genders, abilities, ages, and sexual orientations, including and especially local chapters of Black Lives Matter, Trans Resistance Mass, and the Massachusetts Center for Native American Awareness. And whereas deeply meaningful acts by residents of Arlington have contributed to efforts to create a world in which everyone's humanity and dignity is recognized and honored. And these acts include the unanimous passage by town meeting of Article 18 on May 2nd, 2016, adding gender identity and expression to the town of Arlington's non-discrimination provisions and collecting data about Arlington residents' sexual orientation and gender identity in the latest Envision Arlington survey in the same way that other demographic detail related to race and ethnicity are collected. And whereas, Town meeting created the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission in 2017 
to promote LGBTQIA plus affirming policies for all residents of the town of Arlington. And whereas the town of Arlington was one of only 10 municipalities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to earn a spot on the human rights campaign's 2020 municipal equality index and one of seven in the state to earn a perfect score. And whereas the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission is aware that in Massachusetts, LGBTQIA plus people of all ages are more likely to experience disparities in health and well being as compared with their straight and cisgender peers, and that these disparities are even greater among transgender and LGBTQIA plus people of color. And whereas students in the town of Arlington who are homeless are disproportionately more likely to be LGBTQIA plus in the town of Arlington's 2019 Youth Risk Behavior Assessment found that sexual minority youth, including lesbian, gay, and bisexual high school students in particular, are at substantial risk for serious health outcomes relative to their peers. And whereas the LBGTQIA plus community in Arlington is resilient, creative, and innovative, and enjoys strong allied partnerships with the town's Human Rights Commission, Council on Aging, Disability Commission, Commission for Arts and Culture, and numerous other groups, residents, and elected officials that support the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission's work to bring greater visibility and empowerment to the LGBTQIA plus population through education, advocacy, and collaboration with other town agencies, schools, and community groups. And whereas celebrating LGBTQIA plus Pride Month in part by displaying Rainbow Commission Pride flags in Arlington Center and issuing this proclamation are outward expressions, representations rather of the town's commitment to full inclusion of the LB, LGBTQIA plus community in Arlington's civic life. And whereas many LGBTQIA plus Pride Month celebrations and commemorations this year will take place virtually and online in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to adhere to public health physical distancing guidance in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, given even greater importance to outward representations of support for the LGBTQIA plus community in Arlington. Now, Therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the select board, reaffirm our support for equal protections for LGBTQIA plus residents of Arlington. Be it further resolved that we designate June, that we designate June 2021 as LGBTQIA plus Pride Month in Arlington. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce Ms. Krinsky, if you have any words for the board, I know you made two requests and you would sent us that proclamation. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, so thank you and thank you for reading that. Um, no, we are just excited historically the select board for the past number of years has, has uh, supported a pride proclamation for the town. And as the proclamation says, it's, uh, it's an important year this year and to represent it uh, in the community is really important to folks. Great, thank you. And could you tell us a little bit about the crosswalk painting yes, as well? Yes, I'd be happy to. So um, for the past few years, we have, um, uh, painted a rainbow flag in the crosswalk across from Town Hall. Um, given construction this year, we are proposing that we move that down to um, the intersection at Pleasant Street and Mass Ave and um, hope to have the opportunity to use um, chalk paint and paint rainbows across Mass Ave and sort of let everybody passing right through the center of town celebrate pride with us. Great. Thank, thank you very much. And I'll turn it to the board for questions, comments. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and I'd like to move approval. Um, and if, if, if the board would indulge me a brief personal moment. Um, growing up as a gay kid in the 70s and 80s in Ohio, I would not in my wildest dreams thought that I would live to be able to marry the person that I love, let alone be elected to serve on a board where I'd have the privilege of voting on this proclamation. I am deeply grateful to my community for its commitment to equality for all. I am aware that none of us are free until all of us are free and that we have a long way to go here in Massachusetts and across the country and across the world. And I'm aware that telling our stories, being willing to live our truth is crucial as is the active support of our community and our allies. And to me, that is why Pride Month matters. 
despite the progress that we have made in some corners. And for that, I am grateful. And I didn't want to let this moment pass as a new member of the board without taking the chance to say so. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll definitely second that. Um, and I want to thank our colleague, Mr. Helmuth, for sharing some personal details, um, not only of his personal experience, but um, also the experience um, that he's having here in Arlington. You know, some cities or towns say, this is what we're doing. We're welcome. We're open. We celebrate diversity. Um, but it's actions, uh, consistent actions that uh, uh, demonstrate that. And I know when we first started this particular initiative, I think with Mel Goldsby uh -huh. um, and others, um, it was very well received. So um, I would have one comment with a question and one question. The comment with the question is, uh, I know that uh, I received uh, as part of your request, um, chalking or mm -hmm. temporarily painting the sidewalk in the center and that you're looking for volunteers. I shared it on Facebook, but I was wondering if Lisa could speak to that in terms of any volunteers. I think it's happening on a Sunday, but if you could just speak to that briefly and then I have a second question. Sure, so our um, our intent is to actually um, do the crosswalk painting in the evening, um, uh, probably like June 9th or 10th, depending on weather. Um, and uh, what has usually worked in the past is with the, the support of Arlington Police Department, we sort of uh, move some of the traffic to the side. We have one lane, we chalk paint for a while. And then when that dries, flip to the other side to get across the street. Um, we have had uh, an enthusiastic, everybody wants to paint the street. It's just a fun thing to do. So we've had um, an enthusiastic group of volunteers, but anybody else who would like to come out and join us, we, we think we'll start probably around eight o'clock at night and it should take us two or three hours given traffic. Um, but anyone who wants to come help us uh, paint the street and paint the town, it's perfectly welcome to do that. And they can connect to us through the Rainbow Commission um, email if anybody wants to volunteer with us. And do you know off the top of your head what that email is? Or if not, um, I can tell them to call the select board office. I, you know what? It's, I don't know it off the top of my head, but, um, okay. but people can contact us through that. And, and if they can just Google the Arlington Rainbow Commission, I think they can find it as well. Okay, and if you're on my Facebook page, it's, it's on there. Okay, and then um, this request came previous years, and I understand why we can't do it last year or this year, but um, people were asking if it is could be and is being considered to not only um, have a crosswalk chalked or temporarily painted in the center, if it could also happen in the East Arlington in the Heights. Uh, so I, I, it's okay, Lisa, if you don't have an answer for this, but I oh. know this question has come up. We hadn't thought about doing it in other areas of town, but we could certainly consider that. We have a meeting tomorrow night and we just need to think about sort of logistics and, and approval from you folks to do it in more than one location. Okay, so maybe not this year, but definitely maybe next year because yep. similar to other things, um, uh, a lot of stuff happens in East Arlington and the center and Heights say, what about us? And then right. this happens in, in the center and East Arlington Heights have said, what about us? So I'm just yep. passing it on. And, and I, I, will, just, I will take it back to the committee that next year we propose to do uh, three locations. A lot. And if we do it along Mass Ave, it'll sort of give that continuity to folks to traveling through town. Definitely. And I think it gives a, a more welcoming, not that it's not, but a a broader welcoming message. Uh, yes. In terms that of that. So thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Ms. Krinsky. Lisa, thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. I'll just note that I think Mr. Chaplain put the email address into the chat there. So you're looking for it. Um, thank you. Uh, we always look forward to this, this uh, request. I want to thank Mr. Helmuth. I, I didn't expect to tear up at at the beginning of the meeting, but it's certainly always good to hear personal stories. You know, I think Arlington, there's a lot of locations like Ms. Mrs. Mahan said that talk the talk, but when it comes to diversity, equity, inclusion, Arlington walks the walk and, and you know, we have broad support for LGBT plus month. 
and I know a lot of people look forward to this, to the painted crosswalks and everything that it represents. So I'm happy to support this and thank you for coming forward. Thank and, you. Uh, best of luck. Thank you very much. We'll also have um, rainbow banners up in town that were previously approved and we have uh, one uh, online virtual uh, event that's taking place. And then we're also gonna have a, an outdoor sort of drive by for folks to come and get some pride. So we'll, we'll share that out with the community as well. So people know other events um, that we're doing during the month. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, sorry, I missed on Ms. Halbert's um, um, comments. I mean, my signal is just dropping without any warning at all. Um, that was the second time. So I imagine I'm gonna have problems with me, but try and get through this. Um, and I hope I won't repeat anything. Uh, when, um, when we did this last year, it, uh, my comment was we've come a long way, eh, but uh, we have a long way to go, uh, especially for people in uh, relationships plus two, well, more than more than two. And what do you know, the, uh, the town meeting, you know, uh, approved domestic partnerships you know, of, of three, three, three plus, you know, and, and I can't tell you how proud I am of this town. And I use pride. Uh, Mr. Diggins, I, we just lost you. Given and I'm sorry, Mr. Diggins, we you froze up on us. Oh, okay, we just lost him there. Um, okay, we'll we'll see if he comes back. I'll give him an opportunity to speak. I, I, you know, to to complete his thoughts there. Um, I also want to echo the the words of my colleagues and thank Mr. Helmuth uh, for for his comments and and uh, we're uh, really pleased to be issuing this proclamation again. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing, Ms. Krinsky. And, and thank you for the, the accommodation that you have made with the banners at the beginning of June. I know there was some discussion in terms of um, the high school seniors and we really mm -hmm. appreciate you working with us Absolutely. on that um, to, to, uh, to, to accommodate them. So thank, thank you so much for that. Um, I don't see Mr. Diggins back here. Attorney Heim, do, should we hold off on a vote until he returns? No, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think what I recommend is that the record reflect that Mr. Diggins lost uh, his feed at approximately 717. Um, he has not yet returned. If you can take a vote on this particular action, given that town meeting is at eight o'clock, I would recommend you take a vote um, without Mr. Diggins. And if he can come in and supplement the vote, I think that that's perfectly okay. good. Wait, there he is. Okay, oh, there he is, okay. <laughs> Mr. Diggins, you're back. I, I, we were just about to go to a vote, but I, if you had any more thoughts, I'd like to give you an opportunity to, to finish what you were you were saying there. Well, it, it, that was essentially it. I'm very very proud of the town, you know, of, of, of how, how uh, it's handled, how it handled the you know, domestic partnerships, you know, uh, the amendment to allow me for groups greater than two pass by 80% and the amendment to allow domestic partnerships you know, was in the 90% range, you know, and, 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 um, and it, it's just, it's always been a very welcoming town. And, and, and I'm part of what I said last year, and this is what I'm hoping for too, is that we, when we think about the word gay as in happy, it's like, we, regardless of your orientation, everybody can be gay. I mean, especially if we live in let live. And I feel that Arlington is very much a town that lives in let lives, you know? And so I, I, I've, I'm, I'm so happy to support this, but I'm really happy uh, to be part of, of this wonderful community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Diggins. Okay, so on a on motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you, Ms. Grinsky. Thank you all very much and happy Pride. You too. Okay. Uh, item three is a discussion and vote select board designee to youth and young adult study committee. Um, I would like to start this one with Mr. Diggins. He actually brought this forward to the board originally for, um, for comments. And then we will have uh, hopefully have a nomination and a vote for our designee. Yeah, thanks, Reed. So uh, as I said, the, the whole reason for, for doing this is to uh, have town meeting in on this um, 
committee eventually. And, uh, I mean, I mean, we will, of course, decide. First thing we'll decide is whether or not it's a good idea to have this. But the presumption is that we're going to be at least explore it and come to the town meeting with, with some um, proposal for what that group should look like. And, and I don't really want it to be something that's owned by the select board because then it depends on the how the, the composition of the select board to keep it going. I, mean, I, I feel that if it is something that is created by town meeting, it is much more likely to last longer. Uh, and and rather than be a few people coming together to, with, to come up with ideas of how it should look, I think it's better to have the broader community um, looking at it. So although there's gonna be a committee of limited number, the meetings will be open. So we will get be able to get a lot of input being from the community as to what that hopeful committee or board, most likely committee uh, um, will look like. So, so I'll stop there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Okay, and and Mr. Diggins had, I, I will let the other members know, has expressed interest in um, in being the designee, but I'll open it up to any nominations. And uh, why don't we start with Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to nominate Mr. Diggins for that okay. role. Makes okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I'd like to second that motion and thank our colleague, Mr. Diggins, for taking on yet another uh, subcommittee task. God bless you. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. I second the second of Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I'll third the second of Mr. Diggins, and, and thank him for, for bringing this forward. And, and uh, I, a town meeting has passed this, so we wish you the best of luck with um, getting the committee going. We look for, forward to hearing from the committee. Um, so with a motion by Mr. Helmuth, in three seconds, I will uh, turn it to Attorney Heim. Yeah, and then motions to nominate uh, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Okay. Uh, item four for approval closing on 1207 Massachusetts Avenue real estate authorization and memorandum of understanding for public space. Um, in, in, Attorney Heim is going to make a short presentation, then we'll have a discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, I'm aware that this has been a, a long process and that many, if not most of the members of the board were not present uh, when this issue first came up. I'm gonna walk very briefly through a history of the property, which was originally developed in approximately 1920, uh, taken by the town and tax title sometime in the 1930s. It is owned by the select board rather than by uh, a different sort of organization or subdivision of the town, uh, which is why the quick claim deed is coming before you. The Disabled American Veterans Club occupied it for many years. On January, in January of 2014, following the closure of the DAV, the select board convened a working group to determine the future of the property. In May of 2015, a town meeting authorized the sale if necessary and prudent and made some subsequent commitments of proceeds from the sale to the capital. Uh, to capital. Uh, most recently, uh, stable. I'm not sure what's going on, but if, if anybody can't hear me. Um, we just lost you a second ago. So if you could just repeat what you just said. I just want to note that um, town meeting authorized the sale and subsequent commitments have been made for the proceeds to go towards the capital plan, including in this year's uh, town meeting capital plan vote. On October 27, 2014, there was a public meeting on potential uses. In November of 2015, this board, uh, using working group and public input, uh, offered the property for lease for an innovation incubator space. Unfortunately, no bids were received um, for, for that particular concept. On June, 16, uh, June of 2016, following further exploration of options, 
the select board authorized an RFP for the sale of 1207 Mass Ave. Just to summarize the RFP terms, there's a minimum sale price of $750,000. The building and property was being sold as is. Highly advantageous bidders were to accept a 40 year mixed use deed restricting, restriction with an incentive uh, with permit fees waived for a mixed use development. Um, other advantageous features were uh, offer benefit to community cons consistent with mixed use and employment opportunities. There was only one bid received from the 1211 Massachusetts Realty Trust it met the criteria, accepted mixed use restrictions, proposing a commercial retail mixed with residential or hotel. Doug, we oh. lost you again. Shoot, all right. Um, I mean, you folks can read what I'm putting on the screen, so I'm gonna not try to go over too much, but in short, there was only one bid. That bid uh, met the criteria and including the uh, advantageous criteria for mixed use. Um, there were some other specific terms, including uh, contingencies on a special permit being received and a 21E inspection. Uh, in March of 2017, the select board authorized the town manager to execute a PNS with final approval to come back before the board. The 21E inspection was completed sometime thereafter. And I just wanna note that the Massachusetts Avenue Realty Trust was later reorganized as 1207 DAV Post LLC. Thereafter, there was the uh, development of the PNS and a special permit review. In October of 2018, the PNS was completed. Terms are consistent with the RFP, which they must be. Mixed use restriction agreement, which was attached to exhibit one and provided to the board as reference, um, was agreed upon and $75,000 was uh, provided in down payment and escrow. In June 21st of 2018, the special permit application was filed. There were ARB, uh, subject to ARB review, public hearings, and to my uh, understanding, a number of modifications of the initial proposal. That, uh, I'm sorry, that should read June 21st, 2019. My apologies, I believe that was 2019. Um, in August of 2020, about a little bit more than a year later, the special permit uh, process wrapped up, it was granted. Pretty much with the uh, terms set forth in the RFP, and in the PNS, uh, but a lot of additional general and special conditions uh, that are normal for a special permit that's subject to environmental design review. Um, I just wanna note that, that because the uh, property uh, was a co-development with the adjacent parcel 1207 with the adjacent parcel 1211, uh, the ARB only waived half the special permit fees because um, the PNS provided for a uh, waiver of permit fees for the premises, but because this is more than one parcel, it did, they didn't feel comfortable covering uh, building permit fees for the entire project. There was an abutter appeal subject to litigation filed in September of 2020. Uh, both the ARB and the Doherty Trust moved to dismiss the appeal. And in December of 2020, the motion to dismiss was granted. January of 2021, any subsequent appellate review ran. And so we're here before the board for final authorization for this uh, very long in development transaction. Here's what's required to close of the board tonight. A vote for final approval by the select board, uh, authorization execution of a quick claim deed with the mixed use restriction consistent with the terms of the PNS and the special permit uh, granted by the Arlington Redevelopment Board and then from uh, the 1207 DAV post LLC a payment of $750,000 to the town. There are additional required conditions remaining. So there's all the special permit conditions and I believe the special permit was attached as reference for the board. Um, obviously uh, they have not broken ground because this hasn't, property hasn't been transferred yet, but obviously all building permits and other you know, uh, pertinent things would have to be uh, obtained before a certificate of occupancy. Um, you'll see that I've stricken out a memorandum of uh, understanding for public space use concurrent with the new, uh, mixed use restriction. That is what was originally proposed to the board and included in your reference material. Um, I've had a conversation uh, with a few folks about that and whether or not um, that's basically adequate in the, uh, in, in, in the in relative to the uh, 
to the uh, public space. And so I sort of uh, suggested that we could uh, change that to development acceptance of an easement approved by the select board in town. That doesn't have to be done to close, but it would have to be done as a condition of the special permit prior to essentially the opening of this uh, mixed use, uh, to my understanding, hotel and restaurant. Um, and then obviously waiver of building permit fees when those building permit fees are assessed. I just wanna have a specific note on the permit fees because I anticipate that they're a subject of uh, you know, importance to, to the board and they've been subject of a lot of discussion at the ARB. The terms of the PNS essentially uh, called for a waiving of uh, building permit fees associated with the premises. Again, the successful bid in this case uh, is essentially 1207 Massachusetts Avenue, the property that the select board owns and the abutting parcel 1211 Massachusetts Avenue. And accordingly, the ARB essentially uh, halved the special permit fees waived uh, because it's one of two parcels uh, developed um, according to the special permit application and the project. Um, in short, uh, it's my recommendation that the select board follow the same approach, um, not waiving all the building permit fees for the entire project, but waiving the building permit fees for half, given that um, it's the development of two uh, abutting parcels and you're only selling one of them. Uh, to my understanding, the uh, uh, applicant uh, 1207 uh, DAV Post, also known as the 1211 Massachusetts Avenue Realty Trust, uh, agrees to this and, and finds it to be an acceptable um, resolution of this matter. Um, I know that council uh, is with us. I can see that Ms. O'Connor has, uh, Attorney O'Connor has raised her hand. Um, if the board uh, is, finds this information is sufficient and this approach is sufficient, then uh, I have a recommended motion here that the uh, board uh, approve the final sale of 1207 Massachusetts Avenue as previously authorized by the town meeting, subject to the terms and conditions set forth in the purchase and sale agreement, special permit for EDR docket 3602, and the agreement for 40 year mixed use restriction as amended. The as amended part is uh, uh, someone noted to me that the uh, quick claim deed still says uh, board of selectmen and we should uh, revise that to select board. Um, and further that there's a typo, uh, well, I think it's a Scrivener's error that, that we can correct and the year is spelled incorrectly. In the, and then finally, uh, and further that it authorized the execution of the quick claim deed as amended to transfer ownership at closing to 1207 DAV post LLC on the conditions and terms set forth there. And with that, um, if the board doesn't have any other questions, um, uh, if the board has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I, I know that the council for the other party is uh, present in the meeting if you have any questions for them. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Attorney Heim. Um, what I'll do now is I, I would like confirmation at some point, maybe we'll do it through the questions from Attorney O'Connor on the agreement on the allocation of the building permit fees, because I know that was a, a point of discussion ahead of time. So if I could, um, if we could promote Attorney O'Connor, I would, before we turn it over to questions, I would like to have that um, just confirmed for, for, for the board. Attorney O'Connor? Yes, good evening uh, to you all, thank you. Um, Attorney Doug Heim has uh, described it, but with one, I think there's uh, one difference. When uh, Doug and I talked, my reading of the PNS is that the special permit fees are all included, but the building permit fees um, would only be as to uh, be given as to the premises. And we talked about there being half um, as a resolution of this. So that's a little different, Doug. Um, you may recall the email I sent you, my reading of the PNS. Um, the board asked for a mixed use development. I think um, the half of the special permit fees is about $5,000, but I do agree, and my client agrees, that the building permit fees, it would be 50%. Otherwise, we are in agreement. This has been a very long, expensive, and arduous road for Mr. Doherty. Um, uh, the amount of time that this took, the amount in legal fees and architectural expenses, and the um, subsequent litigation that was instituted um, by the abutters. 
um, it was more than, it was an extraordinary amount of money for this mis mixed use development. This is a very small lot of land, 4,600 square feet, I believe it is. Um, it's virtually an, an unbuildable lot and only had, has value to, I would suggest you to Mr. Doherty and the, uh, or the abutter on the other side. So um, that would be my client's position on that. Okay, well, the building permit fees is what I was concerned with Attorney O'Connor. I just have a question for Attorney Heim, then I'll turn it over to the, to the board. We don't have any jurisdiction over the special permit fees. Is that correct, Attorney Heim? That, that would be between the applicant and the redevelopment board? It's my understanding that the redevelopment board essentially uh, waived half of the fees um, and that was their decision. So um, I, I don't believe the select board has a role in, uh, in that further other than the um, fact that obviously the PNS was negotiated and executed by the town manager. I'm happy to continue to talk about that with Attorney O'Connor uh, with respect to the special permit fees in the ARB, um, but I, I don't think the select board is positioned to uh, make a determination uh, contrary to the ARB's decision at this point in time. If, if I could just, Doug, if I could respectfully disagree, this is a contract between my client and the board of selectmen. Um, uh, I don't really think the, the ARB could vary it to be candid with you. Mr. Chair, I, I obviously uh, have a great deal of respect for, for Attorney O'Connor's uh, you know, position on this. Um, I, I think that the decision of the ARB was the decision of the ARB with respect to their assessment of the fees. Um, if the uh, select board wants to revisit the issue, um, the board can obviously provide some direction to me on that, on that score. But um, I'm not, I'm not prepared to uh, sort of have that issue uh, be sorted out here now without some further discussion with the ARB. And Mr. Attorney O'Connor, I apologize if I misunderstood uh, your client's uh, position on this. Yeah, that's okay, Doug. No. Okay, thank you, Attorney Hamm. I'm gonna turn it over to questions right now and then we'll have a discussion. I mean, this this isn't the type of thing that I, we're gonna be able to resolve ten, tonight. And and if it's something that we need to, to come back to have a vote on the transfer, then we'll come back at, a, at our next meeting. I, I, I had thought that these issues had been resolved. And I think both attorneys thought they had been resolved and sometimes on live TV, that's what happens. And, and so, um, why don't I turn it over to, to members? Why don't we put the special permit question aside, see if there are any other comments or questions, and then we'll make a decision where we go. Unfortunately, because of town meeting, we don't have a long time to talk about this. And frankly, it's the type of thing that I think should be talked about offline in any event. But I will start with uh, Mr. Hurd. If I can just ask one question about, just so I, to make sure that I'm hearing this right about the special permit fees. Mr. Corsi, I don't want to go contrary to what you just said, sure. but I just want to make sure that I'm hearing. Attorney Heim, did you say that the ARB already waived half of the special permit fees? That's my understanding, uh, Mr. Hurd. <clears throat> ARB totally. wanted to waive half of the special permit fees, and I believe what Attorney O'Connor is referencing is that half of those fees is about five thousand dollars. Is that correct, Mr. Attorney O'Connor? Yes, it's not. So, I guess what's the issue if that's already been waived? No, my, my client's position is that the reading of the PNS is 100% of the special permit fees are waived and 50% of the building permit fees would be waived. Okay. We objected, just so that you know, we did object to that at the ARB meeting. Okay. All right, so then we will put push that one aside. Um, I'm happy to approve vote to approve the transfer um, subject to whatever it needs to be worked out with special permit fees and whatnot, if that's appropriate at this time. Um, I was happy, I was glad to not take up the memorandum of understanding just yet, because I think we need to flesh out a little more as to, you know, whether or not that particular space, uh, this board isn't qualified 
to to make the determination of whether or not that comply complies with the bylaws. So if we were to make that de determination, I think we, we'd want a little more um, from the ARB certifying that they as a board have made a determination that that public space that's being presented to us has complies with the bylaws as being presented. Um, but as far as the transfer, you know, I, I'm excited about the project. I think it's a good project for the town. I, I think it fits the neighborhood and, and, you know, I'm happy to motion to approve as requested on just the transfer for the, for us to sign the deed. Great. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Did, did, did do you want to make a motion on that or? Yep. So I'll move as requested by attorney Heim. Okay. With, with the exception of the, right. Okay. As requested by attorney Heim. Okay. Um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on Mr. Hurd's motion, I'm a, a little reticent on where we don't seem to have answers on at least one major issue approving it, I'd like to come back at the next meeting and actually have that vote. Um, is it true, Attorney Heim or Attorney, attorney <laughs> Chairman Ducorsi, that that's the vote that is um, anticipated for tonight? Um, or is my reticence that we should wait until we uh, take a motion like that? Well, I mean, we have an unresolved question and, and you can question how material it is, but it's, it's I think, I, I think all of us were coming into this meeting tonight thinking that there, all the issues had been resolved. This is an unresolved issue. And, you know, at some point between now and the end of the fiscal year, we've got to transfer the property because the um, proceeds from the sale need to be applied to the capital plan. That's for fiscal 22. If this isn't, if this isn't, uh, issue isn't resolved. It doesn't survive the 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 deed. Then I think it. I think you you may be right, uh, Mrs. Mahan. That you know, most time is of the essence. This week, we come back on May 26 and we get this issue resolved. So there's no open questions, no matter what the size of the uh, the issue is. And I, I want to get the motion on the table from Mr. Hurd just to, to to have it out there. But we, um, I, I understand your reticence, and, and given the hour. Um, it, it may require us to, to come back. So if you have any other comments, why don't we do that? And then we'll decide what we do with the, uh, the motion and any action this evening. No, okay, thank you. And um, I guess just the uh, lowly court reporter to me um, in terms of, I'd, I'd prefer not to take a vote tonight on um, at least one, if not other outstanding issues. If I could ask four quick questions um, uh, under the, Plan special permit. Um, I understand it's it, it's uh, 1207 Mass Ave. It said 1205, and that was changed an initial for, to 1211. But I don't recognize the initials as uh, Mr. Doherty, Ms. O'Connor, or anyone else. Uh, who initialed that, and do, and do they have the legal standing to provide those initials? Attorney Heim, do you, I don't know who initialed that. I don't have the PNS in front of me. It's on the plans, special permits. I'm sorry, Attorney Heim. I believe um, there's a, um, oh, sorry, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vaughn. I believe uh, there were a few Scrivener's errors in the original PNS that was executed. Um, I believe that I'm, it's not my it's not my initials, but I believe I believe those are Mr. Doherty's, because there was I think original the reference was to 1205 rather than 1211 on the other side, so that that's, nope. that's what okay. And and what I would ask is is if that can get clarified because that does not look like a JD, it looks like a ED or LD to me. And then on um, under cost in um, prorations under seller costs. Um, the three uh, enumerations, one, two, and three under 13.2, um, do those include all the seller costs? It, it says that seller costs, um, the seller shall pay for all the following costs, and then it lists them. Is that all the sellers? Is that all of the seller's cost? Is, it, is there something else that isn't covered that the seller is pay, not paying for? Uh, 
Mr. Chair, uh, no, I, I, I don't believe so. I believe the seller is is covering the costs. I don't think Ms. O'Connor has a different read of it. I think it's a fairly straightforward uh, transaction where the where the seller is bearing. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. The, I believe the buyer is 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 bearing uh, these costs. I don't think there's anything else that we're um, not registering or or haven't been recorded. Thank you. And, and I guess my request would be, having started out in land court. My memory is a little cobweb, but if either Attorney Heim or Attorney Cunningham could look into the actual um, seller's costs for 1207 and 1211 to make sure that that encompasses everything and none of that falls uh, on us. And then regarding the quick claim deed, um, I just had a real quick question. Does this uh, agreement for mixed use under the quick claim deed apply to 1207 as well as 1211? Mass F. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, just to touch on your, your previous question and end this one. Um, so we don't um, we don't own 1211. So this is only uh, respect uh, with respect to 1207. The special permit condition applies to 1211 with respect to mixed use uh, restriction, but we're only conveying 1207. So the mixed use deed restriction that we're attaching is for that property. The um, Special permit is what will require mixed use of 1201. Okay, and I guess I would leave it for when we discuss it at the next meeting. Um, since 1207 has been partnered in with 1211, and I want to verify that an authorizing person initialed this, um, I do consider it um, as both, especially under the quick claim deed. And then the other um, point I wanted to note, and we can probably discuss this in our next meeting. Um, is with regard to the um, public space. Uh, uh, if someone can give me a really brief, either Attorney Heim or Attorney O'Connor, uh, regarding uh, the town bylaws and, and the public space that it appears we're being granted, exactly what that means, or maybe we should save that for the next meeting. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy or Attorney Heim. Yeah, if I could just interject there for a second. I, I think we, we hold that for the next meeting. I do want to okay, allow the other two fine. members to talk. It that's is in the zoning fine. bylaw, but we can address that at the next meeting. And, and perhaps in between the meeting, Attorney High might be able to, to update you on that as well. Um, any other questions? No, no. And it, it, I, I don't want that question answered tonight, but it, I, I have a lot of questions. It's, it's pretty vague uh, in terms of the public space. I don't know if it's 25%. But maybe if Attorney Heim could have provide the full select board um, uh, more details on that. And then when we do, I'd prefer to vote this at the next meeting versus tonight. Thank you. Um, keep okay. saying Attorney DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Diggins. Sure, my, my questions are simply procedural. So these will be to you, um, Mr. Chair. I mean, so um, my understanding is that the town meeting has authorized us to sell this and we need to sell it a, um, by the, before the end of the fiscal year so it can accrue to this year. With respect to these unresolved issues, I mean, are those things that can be resolved by us or do they need to be resolved by ARB? Well, I, I, I'm just going to, I think over the next week there'll be discussions between Attorney Heim and Attorney O'Connor and the ARB, and, and uh, they'll, they'll come back to us. And, and I think Attorney Heim said earlier that it, the special permit fees are within the purview of the redevelopment board and not the select board. But that's something, it's one of the reasons why I think we're headed towards tabling this uh, to next week, but we'll get the answer for you on that uh, between now and then. Well, no, well, it's fine. No, it's, it's really even a, isn't a matter of getting the answer to me, it's more a matter of me, whether we have me time to resolve these issues uh, in time to then do the sale because it looks like we're locked into when we need to do the sale. So the question is whether we can do the sale sooner rather than later, I mean, and then resolve the, all these other issues, I mean, uh, later, I mean, uh, with enough time to do the proper deliberation. You know, so I'm not trying to push the vote for now, but just to say, I mean, we get to next week, I mean, and I mean, I'm a little concerned that we'll be approximately in the same situation next week. I mean, and so I just want us to understand whether or not we should be prepared to make the sale and still have issues that need to resolve after the sale, whether that's possible. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and I think 
Can I just um, point out that just so the board knows, the title is done. I have the municipal lien certificate. As soon as the vote happens, we can close the next day. So just so the board knows that. Great. Thank you, Attorney O'Connor. Okay. A any other questions or comments, Mr. Diggins? No, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, procedural question for you, Mr. Chair. Uh, would a motion be helpful at this point to either second Mr. Hurd's motion to, uh, to keep it going or to motion move to table? Well, I think, I think from where the discussion is going, Mr. Hurd did make the motion, but I think, I think a motion to table is probably in order if that's, if that's what you're, um, if that's what you're so inclined to do based on Mrs. Mahan's comment to us, Mr. Hurd, if he's, if he's comfortable with that as well. Yep. I mean, that's fine with me. Tabling is fine. I don't think that's an issue that's going to hold up the sale either way, but I mean, if the board's more comfortable approving the sale with all the information, then I can withdraw the motion to approve. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Okay, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, yes, I'll move the table to our, this item to our next meeting. Uh, if I could still ask a question. Um, sure. Yeah, so, uh, and th this may be for, for Attorney Heim through you, Mr. Chair, or your, at your discretion. Uh, a resident of the town did email me about this issue today and, and had a specific question that I just thought would be good to ask now uh, regarding the building permit fees as distinct from the special permit fees, which are under the purview of the, of the redevelopment board. Uh, uh, this, this resident said that it was not clear to them that the select board is free to change the billing permit fees without town meeting approval because town meeting sets the fees. So I just want to ask the, the question, does, does the select board have that authority to waive uh, any or all of the, of the billing permit fees on its own? Yes, it does. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, no further questions. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Okay. Do, so do we have a second on Mr. Helmuth's motion to table? Second. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on, on comments. We will, come back and I, and I think to your point, Mr. Diggins, if we come to next Monday, which is when we have to publish the agenda for next Wednesday and we don't have the issue resolved, we won't put it on the agenda for next Wednesday. But I, I think we should be able to get this, this resolved so that when we come to the meeting, we don't have open issues and, and, and everything is cleaned up. So um, on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Hurd uh, to table, um, Attorney Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous. Okay. okay, thank you, Attorney Heim. Okay, last item. Uh, thank you, Attorney O'Connor. Uh, last item is new business, uh, Attorney Heim. No new business, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I know we're uh, late in the meeting, so I'll be brief, but important to mention, I think as the board and those watching at home know, the governor made a series of announcements earlier this week in terms of the timetable uh, time of reopening Massachusetts. Many of those decisions having an impact directly on Arlington and its operation of town government. So we will be issuing a comprehensive statement on our normal Thursday schedule tomorrow, but uh, our current thinking is to align with recommendations being made by the state uh, in terms of openings and wearings of ma wearing of masks indoors and outdoors. And we'll enumerate that in the announcement tomorrow. And specifically to town government and town offices, we plan to bring all staff back to town offices as of June 1st and open to the public as of June 15th when the state of emergency is officially lifted. So I'll provide the board uh, the more detailed text of what we plan to release tomorrow once it's prepared and then that will be released publicly uh, at the end of the day tomorrow, <clears throat> as has been our, our schedule for the release of information over the course of the past year. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chapterlane. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. None of business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Diggins. None for me, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Um, just very briefly, I talked to the town manager about this, but like to see us try to designate a few areas in Arlington that's within our control for um I, I had talked to some business owners and restaurants last year about particularly about having some spaces that they could essentially give us an RFP for outdoor dining event if they wanted to have music and 
and serve food and a way for some of our restaurants that lost businesses over the past year to bring people back into the fold in a safe way that makes people comfortable. So I'll follow up with the town manager on that, but it's certainly something that I think as the weather gets nice, nicer and restrictions are lifted, it could be a good thing for our, both our residents and our businesses to enjoy some time out, out, outdoors. And then um, we, Arlington had a visit from one of our past board of selectmen members, Frank Heard this weekend. He, he wanted me to bring up, he drove, he's a, he was a big steward of the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. And he, he brought up to me that the, uh, some of the gates were in poor condition. So he wanted me to ask that we could take a look at if the, what it would look like to uh, either repaint or do some work to finish to spruce up the, the gates to Mount Ple Pleasant Cemetery. So I told him I would bring that up at our next meeting. That's it. Great, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the town manager. One of my questions was um, when town hall would reopen. I was hoping it was May 29th because the statement was as soon as there is a vaccine available, um, and especially in light of the select board, treasurer's office and town clerk's office have been open pretty much throughout um, the pandemic. Um, I'll look forward to understanding it's 6 1 and 6 15 to the public, but I was hoping it would be May 29th. The other thing that I uh, discussed with the chair and um, the town manager is the recently, in recent noise issues over Dillboy Field in Somerville, um, uh, the town manager indicated he would follow the model uh, that we did last time that was successful. We had probably nine different models. The one that was successful was having our recreational director, Joe Conley, contact his or her counterpart in Somerville. And I believe that has either happened or is about to happen um, in light of town meetings about to start. If I could ask the town manager if he could either let myself and the chair know and or send a blast email tomorrow um, after that meeting with Mr. Conley so we can get back to the residents um, on Dilroy Field. And then I would leave with you, Mr. Chair, uh, the board received an email from a resident, I'm blanking on her name, I wanna say Dr. Nora Glory or Rory on Webster Street um, regarding a Verizon approval. And perhaps we can talk about that at a future meeting. So thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. And I am not the last person to speak, right? So I won't make the motion to suspend. That's right. I, I, I just okay, have I'll a brief stop. comment and then I'll done. come back to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Okay. Just very briefly this afternoon, Mr. Helmuth and uh, Mr. Chapdelaine and I had a meeting in the select board chambers with um, Mr. Feeney, uh, Mrs. Bongiorno and, and uh, representatives from ACMI, Jeff Monroe was there. And we had a discussion about returning to the chamber. Um, and we have a goal of returning on June 21st. That would be the first me scheduled meeting after the full lifting of the state of emergency. Uh, we're gonna work with them. There are some technology enhancements that need to be made to the chamber, but it's been a good meeting. We've had two meetings recently on that and, and have made some real good progress. So I will uh, keep the board updated on that. One last thing I just wanna announce, congratulate um, Ashley Myers on the call. She has accepted the position of office manager at the select board and we're thrilled to have her uh, accept that role. She's been in that role effectively for the past few months, but congratulations to Ashley. She starts officially on Monday in, in, the, in the new position. Um, so with that, I will turn it back to Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Motion. Chair. I'd like to uh, make a motion that <clears throat> the select board meeting suspend and reconvene uh, uh, concurrent with the opening of uh, tonight's regular town meeting that we remain in session and that our adjournment uh, will also be concurrent with the adjournment of the uh, 2021 regular town meeting. Great. Is, there, is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd. Second. Mr. Diggins. Oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmut. You appears to be frozen. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. See you all in 24 seconds, yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes, okay, the last, the last bell hasn't rung for eight <laughs> o'clock, so we're done, thank you.